Welcome to News West 9's West Texas View with Johnny Lou Avery. Welcome to the West Texas View. I'm Johnny Lou Avery. It is a pleasure to welcome back into our studio today Bill Brandt, who is the president and CEO of the International Herald of Truth, and Larry Sanders, who is the director of development for the Herald of Truth. And they travel the world over with a single purpose, working with their network of people, and that's to bring the Great Commission uh, that we were all instructed to do to all the peoples of the world, the simple message of Jesus Christ. And so it's been so much uh, fun to hear how the Herald of Truth began in just a, a vision between two people, and then it spread worldwide. And it is now being spread through technology, through the internets, DVDs, uh, television, radio, and so on, as well as one-to-one. -one. And um, so today, we're, uh, last week, we, we concentrated on their efforts in Cuba. And today, we're going to concentrate on what they're doing and how they're doing it in Africa, which is much more remote and far removed from uh, the way we do things in America. So talk to us about that. And, and Larry and Bill, thank you again for coming back today. It, it, is, to it is our delight to uh -huh. be here. We began working in Africa uh, at different spots since the 60s. It hasn't been until about the last 10 years that we've made a concentrated effort and we've looked specifically at following a native tribal language called Chichewa. And, and that language, Chichewa, goes, starts in Malawi, goes through parts of Mozambique, Zambia, and then Tanzania. Mm -hmm. So we... So that's the eastern... Eastern part of Africa. Africa. Okay. Think the island called Madagascar right across into Africa is that area. Okay. So we, um, we decided to invest greatly into that. So we had all of our literature translated into Chichewa. Uh -huh. No, I can't read it. We've made sure that we found Bibles or had Bibles printed, full Bibles with, in the Chichewa language. Most of that was available. And so we started in Malawi. Malawi, East Africa is probably the most pro democracy, pro-American, mm -hmm. African country uh, currently in Africa. Uh, sweet people. Uh, it is relatively laid back. Mm -hmm. uh, we started there. Uh, but it's we, not an area of nomads. No, no. This they is, uh, well, not as we understand the term nomads, but we have a lot of displaced people in the mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. uh, as is most of Africa, uh -huh. people right. move because they follow mm -hmm. where the food is. Mm -hmm. And so they're displaced in that way, but not nomadic in their nature or their culture. Uh -huh. So we started in Malawi. We then followed that trail to Mozambique, which is heavily Muslim. Uh, and you haven't lived till you wake up to uh, the cleric singing from mm -hmm. the, 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 the spire yeah. at, uh, at five o'clock in the morning and you know you're not in Kansas uh -huh. anymore <laughs> That's right. or Texas. Um, and then we went over to Zambia, again, following that tribal language, and then ended in Tanzania, just the top part. Tanzania is where uh, Chichewa and Swahili overlap. And you already know Swahili, because you saw the Lion King, hey, that's Simba, true. so you know some, uh, the most important word I learned in Swahili was Mugu, that's God. And, and so we have done campaigns we have done uh, on-site campaigns, we have done radio, we have done Bible distribution, all of that. And one of the cultural changes that we've noticed was that in Africa, especially where we go, out in the bush, as they say, there is not a whole lot of electricity, not a whole lot of computers. Uh, there are radios, but not very many, and they have to be battery operated. Yeah. So our first efforts in Malawi were using radio. We thought that was a great thing. And not very many people listened. Mm -hmm. And we didn't do very much literature because everything was on the radio. Mm -hmm. And we found that in Africa in general, especially those Eastern countries, mm -hmm. literature is handed down from one person uh -huh. to another who then hands it down to somebody uh -huh. else. And while the pages may get dirty and tattered mm -hmm. and faded, it's still handed down. Mm -hmm. 
So in America, we would have thrown it away mm -hmm. after we glanced at it. But they value every piece every of paper piece. they pick and they, up. And then they, they, and they talk and they pass it down. The same thing with Bibles. Most people in Africa don't own their own Bibles. I have 20 different versions of Bibles in uh -huh, my house. Me too. And, and when I study, I study from a multiplicity of them. Mm -hmm. But in Africa, it is unusual. And if you do own your own Bible, it is tattered, it is torn, the cover is off, and you wrap it in some kind of covering that's waterproof. Mm -hmm. And then when you come, you open it up. Carefully. And I've watched people open up their Bibles as if it were gold, the most precious thing that they ever owned. And then they share. They get four or five people and they stare or read the Bible. Uh -huh. So I went in and said, we're going to go, and this happened in, in Malawi, and I said, we're going to go and give everybody a Bible at the event we're going to do. And my director of ministry said, Bill, that's probably... Who understood the culture said, not that, a good that, idea. That's not a good idea. <laughs> and I said, I know what's going on. I'm El Presidente. We're going to do this. And so I caused a riot in Malawi one year <laughs> because we handed out Bibles to everybody there. And then when we ran out, people started fighting with each other for that Bible. Uh -huh. Why didn't I get one? <laughs> yeah, where is my Bible? And, and the physicalness of that, uh -huh. I mean, they, they were serious. Uh -huh. And after we calmed everybody down and said, we're sorry, we only brought this many. <laughs> we'll get you some more. The, one of the uh, representatives from the church that we work with in Malawi, and wherever we go, we work with the local uh -huh. church. Again, that nurturing community concept uh -huh. after we leave. And it doesn't have a name on the door necessarily. You're just interested in people that are believers. Uh, I want people who are going to help people survive right. the devil. That's right. And so the, this, this gentleman comes up and says, Bill, that was not a good idea. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I'm sorry. So let me suggest a way to do this. Okay. Give the Bibles to the churches, the area churches, who normally expect to have Bibles and then they share them with their congregation and they come in and they share the Bibles. Uh -huh. It's a communal effort. Uh -huh. oh. oh, okay. And so that's You're what right. we've been doing ever since. Uh, we, when we go to a place, we give the area but, churches. But what we're saying is that that in Cuba you did it completely different from what you're doing it in yes, Africa because you're customizing the message uh, uh, the delivery of the message, but not the message. Correct. The message is the same no matter where you are. We're going to have to take a quick break. We'll be back in just a minute and continue this conversation about our evangelism in Africa of taking the word through the Herald of Truth. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. West Texas View will be right back. 